All right, so today we're gonna to be doing a beginner's guide to true NAS. So let's get started. Now this video is sponsored by PCBWay and if you guys are interested in DIY or electronics where you need a manufacturer to build your own products, uh, look no further than PCBWay. They actually have online calculator that give you quotes within minutes and they also do 3D printing and PCBs as well. Now with their state of the art technology, they will actually get all your products very precise and on time. So if you do need some sort of PCB manufacturing or 3D printing, look no further than PCBWay. Now back to the video. All right, so TrueNAS is truly a NAS operating system. Its focus is to share your files through your network, network attached storage. Uh, this is actually a very good operating system to use. It's very easy, it's very intuitive, and it provides you with what you need if you're planning to share your files. What makes this a very good NAS is the ability to install virtual machines and apps. So you can actually expand the functions of TrueNAS itself. Now today what we're going to be using is called TrueNAS Scale and they do have different tiers which is TrueNAS Core, TrueNAS Scale, and TrueNAS Enterprise. So TrueNAS Core is just very low resources, but you're able to just use the feature of the NAS. While TrueNAS Scale opens up the doors by allowing you to use virtual machines and scale, then enterprises for more corporate. So we're gonna be installing TrueNAS Scale. Now the machine that I'm gonna be installing this on is the Zima Blade. Now if you've seen me do videos about this, I will have a link down in the top left in the description down below for the TrueNAS build that I did. And also if you wanna know more about the board, I have another video there. But we are gonna be using this setup and I am gonna be using this setup for quite some time for other operating system testing like Unraid or OMV or something along the line of server applications for this just to see where I could take it. So if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification notification icon so you know when that video is going to be out. Now jumping into the desktop or jumping into the computer here we have our bio screen. Now I am just going to go over to the boot selection. So here we go. I am going to go into this OMV, CDM, PyKVM and boot into the installer. Now here we have the installer. You could use this through comms or just install normally through the desktop. So if you have something connected, you can do this. If you don't, what's cool is if you don't have HDMI output from certain NASes, you can use a serial to connect to this. To install this is actually quite simple. Um, I am gonna actually do install slash upgrade. And it's a pretty quick install too as well. I do have two hard drives plugged in, which is two terabytes each. And then I have the 32 gigabyte EMMC. So I'm gonna hit enter on that and go through the process. Upgrade and install will preserve all your existing configurations. So if you have an older version and you wanna upgrade, you could do this. I'm gonna do a fresh install and I'm gonna do format the boot device. Now, normally you don't have to go through this whole process because I am actually reinstalling something that's already there from TrueScale. So I'm just gonna go through the whole thing. Now you do have root user, administrative user configured uh, using web UI. I'm just gonna set up an admin user just in case and set up a pretty easy password because I'm gonna wipe this out in a little bit anyway. Now this installation process, give or take, is about 10 minutes if you're installing this through USB, so it's not too long. After you reboot, you'll be displayed with this. Uh, this is your console. It just gives you information that you need to know, which is like your IP address for your console. I mean, for your TrueNAS. And there's some other settings that you could use over here, but it's really not needed. At this point, you could just disable your HDMI or turn on, you know, unplug everything. But I'm gonna navigate over to the 206. And when you log in, uh, this is your dashboard that you will see. Now you can configure this and disable like system information or help and then it'll actually show you the things that you wanna know. But first thing we need to do is create a pool. So I'm gonna go down the list on the left side and then we could just uh, kinda set everything up. So storage, I'm gonna create a brand new pool. I do have two hard drives right here, SDA and SDB, that are two terabytes each and I'm gonna move them over. And because I got two, I could actually use mirror mode or I could use Stripe. Now mirror mode is basically if you have a redundancy of one hard drive. If one hard drive fails, you still have the second one with data on it and you have time to replace it. Stripe is when you lose one hard drive, that's it. All your data is gone because I only have two. So you can choose whichever one you want, but a safer bet is to use mirror. So let's, let's stick with mirror. Now in my case, I like to name this data store. So for you guys who are familiar with VMware, that's what they usually call their data. Um, but yeah, data store. And I'm gonna hit create, confirm because all the contents will be deleted and give this about like two minutes. It's really quick to create this pool. Once this is done, uh, we can move on to the next step which is creating the share and everything that you want. 
All right, here we go. Uh, we basically got a capacity of 1.76, which is about two terabytes. And again, it's in mirrored mode. So the other hard drive is just basically for backup. Now, the next thing we would need to do is data set. You can actually add a data set here. And I'm gonna do that right now and call this share because that's what basically the folder I'm gonna be sharing. And uh, you could go down these options, leave it as uh, generic or whatever. You could just leave it blank. So now I created something called share, which takes the place of all the data store. And then in shares, this is where you have to activate certain things. Now you need Windows SMB if you want this to be a network enabled share. So I am gonna enable that, choose the mount point, and I'm gonna choose share. You see how I went down the list? And then you can name this, I'm gonna leave it as share, and then I'm gonna hit save. And then the next thing that we need is uh, NFS. Now from here, you could actually take a quick look to see if um, there's anything you need to adjust. For me, it's fine. As long as you see group built-in users, that's what we're gonna be using to access the drive. So we're gonna keep this. And you could just save access control list. It'll rewrite everything if you did some changes to it. Otherwise, you don't need to edit this. You could just leave it as blank. I mean, just exit out of it. But I'm gonna save this as the list that it needs to be. Now, I'm gonna head back over to share and enable NFS. And the reason to enable NFS is just basically for containers. Um, this method is basically more uh, used when you are trying to lo access local information. Instead of using your host file, like slash whatever, slash whatever, uh, you will just use your NFS share uh, as a local host instead. Uh, it is a much better way of um, actually sharing your drive for your containers. All right, there we have it. So we got our share and they're both at the same location. Now, data protection is something if you do have something else set up and you want to back up your data, you can set up rsync or you set up cloud sync, whatever you got. So I'm going to skip over this because we're not doing any backing up right now. Uh, network is nothing I have to worry about because I only got technically one network interface. The other one I'm going to get rid of soon. But um, with one network interface, there's not much you really need to do unless you want to change IP address and all that other stuff. Now, as far as credentials, I am gonna to go to local user and create a new user just for my local share. This way I don't have to use admin and I can use my username. So I'm gonna hit my name, Don, put in a password right over here and basically leave everything the same. And then I'm gonna hit save. This should have access to your shares right now. So we're gonna go test that out right now. I'm gonna open up my folder and then I'm gonna go into here. You, if you are using Linux, you could just go into SMB or type it into the top. For Windows, you would have to do slash slash like this one and then the IP address. In my case, it's gonna be like this, 192.168.105.206. And then there you go, I have my share. And then I could create text file. I should be able to write to it, there you go. And I'm gonna leave that for here. But now we have our network share and we could just transfer files into it if we need to. Now we have virtualization, which we're not gonna deal with because the eight gigs of RAM is not a lot. You can install a small operating system, but unless you really, really need to, I would avoid using virtual machines, but you can. It's using QEMU and you can run Windows or run, if you got more RAM, you can run anything you want. Now the most important part or makes TrueNAS so good is the apps or basically Docker containers. So I'm gonna go into selecting the pool, which is the data store, choose. It's gonna generate the file or the folder called XI systems or IX systems. And in there, it's gonna store your Docker information. Um, it's just generating that right now, which should take about one or two minutes. So we're just gonna let this go. All right, so from here on, this is basically the bread and butter. Uh, you do have with the stock catalog about like 60 applications, uh, which is more than enough for certain home uses. Like you got Nextcloud, uh, WireGuard Easy, Piehole, stuff like that you could just install by clicking on here. But if you are looking for more, a lot more Dockers, go over to Manage Catalogs and add a brand new catalog. From here, you gotta make sure it's not malicious and all this other stuff. So I'm gonna say okay and call this catalog True Chart. Now this has a lot more repositories or catalog in it. It's about like 700 applications you can install. So it's HTTPS github.com true charts slash catalog. Just like that, we're gonna leave it in the stable branch and then main, and then we're gonna hit save. Now from here, it's gonna take like 20 to 30 minutes for this to load up. It actually like categorizes everything. And to check the progress of it, just go to jobs. It's gonna be here and slowly caching all the way up to the top. So just let this run. In the meantime, you could still do other stuff uh, if you want, but for now, I'm just gonna let that catalog 
and other stuff you have is reporting to see how your CPU usage is and you have your system settings so if you want to set up some stuff now advanced is where you kind of want to play around with if you have a separate graphic card and you want to isolate that GPU to uh, pass through to your VMs or your uh, dockers you can configure it here but since I only have one graphic card that is built into the uh, CPU I'm not going to be able to do that all right now that the catalogs are done loading you can now see there's going to be like hundreds extra. Look at this. I could keep scrolling and there's going to be a, at least an app for you that you could use. Now I'm going to go in here and look for um, Jellyfin and we are going to install this version of Jellyfin. This is slightly updated than the one that TrueNAS has, which they have version 1.014 and this one is 1.015. So I'm going to stick with the Jellyfin one that comes with True Charts and uh, configure the rest through here. All right, so now we could go down and kind of like go through some of the settings. Now, most of the stuff you can leave as default, but this is what you want to play around with right over here, app storage. Um, so the type of storage for the configs, we could leave as PVC, and this is the quota for it. You can leave it at 256, whatever you want. Uh, transcoding setting here, you want to change this to uh, empty dir. Uh, what this does is basically as long as it hits a certain amount of threshold it'll start deleting itself and you can either set it to memory or default i think uh, the setup i believe in this is two gigs so and once it hits two gigs it'll just start deleting the older files now if you got a lot of ram obviously you could use memory for this which is a lot better so i'm going to leave this as uh, default because i don't have a lot of ram now we do need to add additional storage and this is the part where we would actually choose nfs share and from here, we would choose our server as local host. And the path on our server would be MNT uh, data store um, share. That's how I believe the uh, folder naming is. And if you want to double check that, you could just go back into your shares and look it up. But I believe this is it. Um, now, our mount path would be slash MNT slash media. This way, uh, this folder is always uh, generated when you have a Linux operating system. So we're just gonna basically take over this and add the folder media behind that. And once you're done with that, uh, you can scroll down a little bit and uh, set up your GPU configuration. If you have like an onboard GPU like I do, which is not picking it up right now, but it should say Intel GPU over here. And I'm not sure why it's not picking it up this time. I've done this before. Um, I'll worry about this a little bit later, but this is where you set your GPU configuration. You just attach your Intel GPU on and after that you just hit save. Okay, there you go. Now give or take this is about a few minutes because it's got to download all the images, compile everything and put everything together for Jellyfin. So once this is done, it'll actually just close itself out and then you can go into the installed applications. Now that it is done, just head over to applications. Again, it's still booting, so you're going to have to give this a second. But in the meantime, while this is happening, uh, it is actually going to have information stored over here later. What I could start doing right now is create a folder called movies. And you'll see in the in the section, this is actually going to pop up in one of the selections because that's what we're sharing. So let's head over to Jellyfin. Okay, from here on, we're just going to go through the wizard. Next, uh, I'm going to set my username to be Don and I'm not going to enter a password. This way I don't need to use a password to enter. I'm going to add a media library. Uh, this is going to be movies. And then the folder, we're going to hit this little plus button. And you're going to notice something here called MNT Media. So, and I have one subfolder called movies. Remember, we just created that. That's where you're going to start dropping your movies in. And then you can hit OK. If you got TV shows, you put TVs. If you want everything in a sub subdirectory, you can make media again and then, you know, do whatever you need over there. Then you can set up the rest of the information that you want over here. I'm going to hit OK. It might just let me do it without having to set the rest. Hit next, English, et cetera, et cetera. Remote connection, yes. Next, and now I am done. So now Jellyfin, I just could just sign in with my username no password and that is it i just set up jellyfin i got my movies directory i got nothing in there right now but you get the idea you could just drop stuff in here now and it'll start fetching it into the movies folder and basically that's how you set up apps in TrueNAS. so Hopefully this got you to a point where you're not intimidated by TrueNAS. It's actually a very intuitive system to add apps, add stuff. The only thing that I actually had to research on was how to uh, link your host shares or NFS shares in my case uh, to use with my dockers like Jellyfin or Valheim and all that stuff. You just need to enable NFS shares. That was the trickiest part to figure out. Otherwise, 
everything is pretty intuitive. You could just go through what you need, storage, backup, shares, user controls, stuff like that. It's all there. So if you got any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you want to see any other operating system, which I will be testing in the future, like Unraid and Casa OS and stuff, stuff like that, I will be putting on this channel. So uh, yeah, be sure to hit that little subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when the next video is going to be out. Anyway, as I always say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.